Murphy, I can do science we open auditions. In fact, literally several would be scientists. Not every idea is a winner, but our Charlotte is so dedicated to the cause that she will listen to each and every question the population wishes to put to her. Name, Serena. Number, 877. Dear Brady, as sound travels through the air, how loud would music have to be to blow out a candle? I'm not at all sure why you want to know this, Serena. But I am intrigued. Let's make some noise. This is the science you want done. Come to us with your burning questions and we'll give you the tools for the job. First, we bring on a 5,000 watt sound system, which is capable of bursting the eardrum of the most seasoned class. Next, the Brainiac sits Serena directly in front of the speakers, gives her some ear defenders and a decibel monitor, lights a candle, then retreats to a seat. The sound from the speakers is a series of vibrations of the air we know as sound waves, or in this case, noise pollution. As the volume increases, these waves become more intense causing greater and greater disruption in the air. At high volume, this disruption to the air could cause serious damage to the unprotected ear. The candle is just in to our tune. As the DJ cracks it up to maximum, the flame is actually extinguished. Remarkable. Her name is Serena. She wants to know how loud music had to be before it would blow out a candle. The answer, 107.7 decibels. Isn't it me?